So. Okay. Now that that's over with, I just wanted to piss off Crimson for a little bit. Uh, my name is Vel. Um, I've been playing D&D since I was 13, 14 years old. If you're wondering, I'm 36 now, so it's quite a many years. Uh, I've been DMing since I was 15 or 16. Yeah, so that's how long I've been playing to give you a little backstory on my experience with, uh, with D&D. Um, I've always played in some manner, or tried to play in some manner. Um, it kind of reminds me there's some really cool moments from D&D &D that have stuck out and um, given me memories uh, of my youth over the year, my childhood. So uh, playing is almost a, a throwback to those times, uh, sitting around a kitchen table until 4 a.m., you know, being yelled at by whoever's parents we were house we were in at that time to keep it down a little bit because they were trying to sleep um but yeah that's kind of the the fun and kind of what we wanted to get back to with this game um those long marathons those when you didn't have responsibilities or anything like that um and now that we all are growing up we definitely have these responsibilities but it's nice to kind of go back to that time when you could take 12 hours out of your day and play a game or you know do whatever you wanted to do and not have to worry about it so the campaign uh in itself is um based on uh, a uh, kind of like a sidebar of the lost campaign if you're not familiar with lost that's the league of shredded tranquility um i run that session uh, on the Real Women in Gaming channel every first Saturday of the month. Um, they just finished the first story arc in the campaign and have begun the um, <clears throat> the Pantheon Wars. Basically, for a little bit of background, in case you haven't watched those, and if you haven't, um, most of them are up on the Real Women in Gaming YouTube or Twitch. Um, and you can go back and check those out if you want a little bit of history on the world that this is going to be taking in before uh, the last Saturday in October. So basically what happened is the uh, the League of Shaded Tranquility, the group, what they thought they were tasked to do was to rid the world of an evil artifact. And it turns out that they were tricked by an old pantheon that had been long locked away to set them free by destroying the artifact basically it's like a figurative gate but it made the the restraints that kept them where they were um and at bay and now they have descended upon lansic which is the world that i made up and this takes place in and they are causing <laughs> havoc for the current pantheon that is in place the difference is is that the older pantheon used to uh, the older pantheon used to walk among the mortals they used to you know influence things directly on a day-to-day -day basis they used to be like oh i like that guy i'm going to give him wealth and power and they used to directly influence and the older pan and the newer pantheon that you know was able to usurp them kind of has that attitude of you know they, they stay where they're at in their realms and once in a while they might help or do something but they kind of have a more hands-off approach and this is the battle of two ideologies of you know who's going to do what you know which way is better nobody really knows um some of the you know you might see these older pantheons as bad guys and some of them have that evil tendencies just like some of the newer pantheons like bane and other gods have um but some of them are you know not bad gods they there's inherently good and bad in the world in the the pantheons so It'll be kind of interesting to see this group take up the mantle for these pantheons because what they have tasked them to do through the trickster god River, that's not his real name, it's what he's been called and lost, they've been tasked to go and find the heart of the creator. And this heart has been said to... Nobody knows where the heart is, but there is information on where the heart is on an island. Um, 
that is west of their current location as they meet for the first time. And they all know of each other. They all know of the different champions for the older gods. Um, but they've never met. And they've just met for the first time. And that's kind of where we're picking up at. And then there's also something that each one of them have been tasked to do that the others are not aware of. And that'll be revealed in the opening video and probably showed during breaks as well, which makes it so that the other players aren't going to be watching um, during the breaks. They're not gonna be watching the stream at all. So you can yell, they should have done this, they should have done that, they're not gonna see it. Uh, we'll have people in the background running the stream, taking the donations, and each donation can affect the game we're giving you guys the power to affect this game it's going to be really cool to see what happens with these donations and how it shapes the game i have it in my mind how i think it's going to go but it's definitely not going to go that way i i've learned through damning that no matter how much you plan it doesn't go that way and now even giving more freedom to other people to influence the game and more personalities to influence what happens in the game. I definitely know it's not going that way. <laughs> they all have a secret that will be revealed at the end. We'll do a little reveal at the end on what the secret is. Some of them you'll probably know what it is by the end. Either secret objective or secret from it. something that's going to affect the game and the others don't know what it is. Now, for the fun part, I haven't told any of them this either. So this is the first time that I'm revealing this, is not only are they the champions of the selected old gods that they are, they're actually the children, either, you know, by out of wedlock, maybe an affair. I told you these old gods walked amongst the people. They have carnal pleasures. They, you know, mixed with the people. You know, if you kind of think of Zeus and, you know, the Greek mythology, you know, Hercules and stuff like that. So they are actually the offspring, whether they know it or not. You know, we'll we'll figure that out beforehand and when we go into the story. But they're hearing that now just for the first time through this video if they're watching. And if they're not watching, then I guess they'll find out that day. So that's kind of a little bit of an exclusive that I just revealed to you guys. Uh, the other thing is, is that they're going to have some sort of power associated with that god because they are a child of that god. Now, I have written down what I want each one of them to have, but maybe if we get like a $20 donation beforehand, you guys can decide what that special power is. Uh, nobody took the entertainment god. One of the things that I was going to have for the entertainment god is if they describe their spell or their attack in an entertaining way, like... I cast a spell, but I do it, you know, in a dance, and they, like, danced a little bit at the table or something like that. It would be more powerful, either last longer or do more damage. But I really didn't have to flush that one out because nobody took that one. And it's not a piece of equipment. It's going to be something inherently in them, and each one of them is going to get this for being the champion and, most importantly, being the offspring of, of these older gods. So, the donation levels. What we're going to do is, for $5, you can give one person at the table advantage or disadvantage. One of the players. So you can make the, the, the next role that they have at advantage or disadvantage, no matter what it is, it's the next role that they have. Because there's going to be a little bit of a stream delay, unfortunately, and that's just how things go with streaming. For $10, you can give myself, the DM, advantage or disadvantage. For $15, we actually just changed change this. You get to make the player itself do something. So what I mean by that is instead of affecting the character's role, you can sit there and say, okay, well, that player, well, let's give an example, it's a crimson. Um, when she talks to anybody for the next half an hour, she can only speak in rhymes. Or she's right-handed, and I notice that she's, you know, she has to roll with her left hand for the next hour. Um, something to mess with the player. They have to, you know, touch their nose when they roll, or, you know, do something like that. Uh, I'm sure you guys can come up with a lot more things and I've just given examples of what you can make the player do, you know, like almost like a drinking game or something that they have to do when you donate, um, when you donate the $15. 
$20 is going to be an auto fail or success for either the DM or the players. So basically what will happen is you'll donate, um, we'll get notification that you donated, and you just designate who in the party or myself that you want to auto fail or succeed on the next time that they have to roll. And no matter what happens, it goes the way that you want it. You want them to succeed, they'll succeed. You want them to fail, they'll fail. So basically this dictates, you know, what happens in the game. Dice rolling happens outside of combat all the time. You know, make a performance check, make a persuasion check, stuff like that. So you guys can affect what happens outside of combat too. For $25, you get to basically create a minor NPC. And you can do whatever you want. You can basically say, I want this guy to be an elf, and he is crotchety, old, and racist against humans. That's, you know, happened in one of our campaigns before. I'll throw him in somewhere. It's not going to be, like, a big scene because it's a, it's a minor NPC, but he'll be in there, and I'll be like, you know, this person was, you know, such and such donated $25, and they came up with this person. And who knows they might pop up again in the lost campaign because this is set in the lost world this is going on in the same world as lost so this stuff that gets created and thrown out there it has a tendency of coming back for thirty dollars um you get to put anything basically that you want into the game um a monster a trap a magic item anything that you can come up with anything that you want you donate thirty dollars i will put it in the game somehow even if it's you know eight o'clock at night and we have a half an hour left i will find some way to put it in the game try not to wait that long because it's a little bit more difficult but you can do that so those are the donation levels and if you want to do something that i didn't list there talk to one of the people that are we're going to have people monitoring chat all day long and we'll figure something out the last thing I wanted to put forth is there is a one-time special donation that I will take up to the day before the game, which is October 27th. If you donate $100, you get to make the final boss. And by what I mean by final boss is the final big bad that they fight. The, the person, you know, I'm not going to give away the story, but it's the big confrontation that they will have to face. And if you want to sit down with me and do step by step i'll do that for about an hour you know we'll go through and walk through it i have final okay over it because i don't want it to be like oh well you know they fight an ant and they step on it and they win because you want them to win that's that's not going to be like that because that's not fun for anybody or it's not going to be a tarasque and you know they're all just going to wipe that's not fun for anybody either so but you for a hundred dollars can think of something and if we have to downscale it or upscale it because you, you want them to fight a kobold, but this is like the super kobold or something like that, we'll upscale it to what you want. Or we can downscale stuff because you want them to fight, you know, one of the gods themselves or whatever. But, you know, perhaps he's been critically hurt in the Pantheon War, so he only has like a fourth of his power. We will, we will work with it if you donate the $100.00 we will do that so i hope you guys join us i hope um you guys get to watch i hope you get to donate root for your favorite players um donate for them and donate against the ones that you don't want to have uh good luck the uh the campaign is actually modeled backstory the organization that this one is going after so we have lost which is league of shade of tranquility and the team this team i like to give the team's names is going to be the charitable hirelings of oligarchical paragons which spells out chop for short i uh kind of did that too as an homage to chop the children's hospital philadelphia where all these donations are going to 100 percent of your donations not only is it going to be fun to see i'm going we're going we'll read your screen name out we'll um you know say hey buddy by the way you get disadvantage because so and so 
you know, said that, you know, you look funny or something. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. Uh, we'll read the donations out. We'll, you know, the players will know they have advantage or disadvantage from this one person or whatever. Um, you know, if one of your buddies is playing in the game, you want to rag on them a lot and give them a disadvantage, like his first four rolls or whatever, they'll know about it. It's all for fun. It's all for a great cause. So hopefully you guys come out, watch it, and um, see what maniacal things that I have planned for their this party I'm actually really excited about some of the uh, some of the encounters that I've been been cooking up so hope you guys come out October 28th see you.